Thinner wires for your DX Commander radial, cramming an 80-foot antenna into 60 feet of space, and how much power can the ATOS antenna actually handle? This time on Mailbag Monday. Well, hello, you sexy-looking hams. My name is Mike K at MRD. Thanks for tuning into Ham Radio Tube. If you have an amateur radio-related question for me, shoot me an email. I would love to hear from you. K at MRD at iCloud.com. Today, we're going to talk about three subjects that are on three people's minds. So let's dive right in. This first one, this viewer is asking, Dear Satan's Dad. Are you here? Yes, he is. Are you paying attention? This is about you. He says, I'm using a DX Commander with radials made out of 18-gauge stranded copper wire. I believe that's just the stock DX Commander wire, if I'm not mistaken. I want to reduce the bulk. What size and type of wire would you recommend? So I have never used any wire other than the DX10 wire, which is freaking amazing wire. So I, I, I can't answer that question pertaining to the DX Commander. However... I do use a lot of 26 gauge wire. Uh, personally, my preference is this 26 gauge wire you get from Soda Beams. It's stupid cheap. I think it's, I think it's 11 or 12 bucks for a hundred meter roll, and then it's like 17 dollars in shipping. So under 30 dollars, your a hundred meter roll. Uh, and I really like the high vis yellow. This is what I predominantly use for like any antenna that I'm going to take out in the field except the DX Commander. The other one I like is this Poly Stealth wire, also 26 gauge. The Poly Stealth is a really strong, I think it's like a steel wire. Um, just really, really strong stuff. This is made by Davis RF, but you don't buy it from Davis RF. You can buy it on Amateur Radio Supplies, I think is the website. I'll leave links for both of these in the description. Not affiliated, they're just who I send my money to. Poly Stealth, you'll get relatively quick, where the Soda Beams is shipping from England, so however long it takes to ship from England to your part of the world. Um, the Poly Stealth, I believe, ships from the US, but uh, both pretty inexpensive. Uh, the Poly Stealth, you can either buy by the foot or uh, by the roll. I just buy it by the roll because I use a lot of it. I'd also add, you may want to pick up one of these Carhartt lunch bags. This is what I use for my DX Commander. And inside of here, see this is not much bulk to begin with, is every single radiating element, every single radial wire, all of the bits and bobs, the guy wire, the stakes, everything fits in this little Carhartt lunch bag. I think they're 20, 25 bucks maybe on Amazon. I've, I've had these in my Amazon store for years. Um, I love that. I think I have like three of these. So um, pick up one of these, and this is what helps keep your DX Commander organized. Everything goes in here, and then I just collapse the mast and have the mast separate, and that's it. So there's not a lot of bulk. Now, how well they, will they work as radials? I, you'd have to try out and let us know. So I will expect a full report by next Monday on your findings. So thanks for writing in. Hope that helps, and uh, hope you learn a little bit about thinner wires with the DX Commander. I'm, I'm kind of curious myself, but I think you need to try it. Next, we have a question about antennas and space. Not outer space, but just space in general. Mike, first off, I enjoy your videos very much. Thank you very much. My question is, take an end-fed wire antenna of some meters. Does it have to be in a straight line? Example of what I would like to do, let's say it's 80 feet long, but my yard is only 60 feet deep. So the run is going north to south for 60 feet, then makes a hard right and runs east to west for the remaining 20 feet. It is horizontal at 20 feet up in the air. Will that work? Yes. So I think an important thing to understand um, in the old adage, any antenna is better than no antenna. I think we often get caught up in what we think is going to be like the best or most optimal situation. But the bottom line is, put it up. I can tell you a story, the late Jerry, uh, WB8FXY, a uh, guy who was on the repeaters constantly in Michigan, one of the greatest guys I've ever met, uh, was trying to get on HF and he put up, I think someone put it up for him, uh, an 80 meter NFED half wave in his backyard in, a, in just a small Michigan lot in a little subdivision that was probably built back in the 50s. And the wire was just going all over the place. I went over there. We put it on the analyzer. Looked at it. Looked looked fine. So 
the only things that might change would be like your radiation pattern, your takeoff angle, things like that. They might not be optimal for what you want to do, but you still got an antenna up in the air. So do it. Don't get don't get too caught up in the in the what ifs. Get caught up in just put the antenna up and get on the air. J just last night, I was doing a pod activation with my 818 and a 49 to one, no, it was a nine to one uh, random wire and uh, my 20 foot carbon fiber mast. And I had it just like kind of, part of it was going over a tree and then it was going over that way a little bit. And then it was coming down. Like it, I didn't care and I'm making contacts and I was putting out all of three Watts on FT8. So uh, don't get too caught up in all of the, all of the theory. Yeah, it's good to have, but just get your antenna up. That's the most important thing. So thanks for writing in, and I hope to catch you on the air because you're going to have an antenna that works. Think of think of an inverted L, case in point, where people don't have either the height or the length to put up an 80 or 160 meter uh, antenna. They go straight up and then over. Inverted L, like that's a thing. Inverted V, they work because you have wire in the air. Like... Just do it. Don't overthink it. I know there's a lot of engineers in this hobby who like to overthink things. <laughs> Just do it, man. Just do it. Lastly, we have a question about one of my favorite antennas, the Yesu ATOS 120. This viewer writes, Hi, Mike. I thoroughly blame you and your buddies for my POTA addiction. It's 1 p.m. I've recently purchased the ATOS 120. I travel a lot for work and sometimes only have enough time for a quick activation. Thanks for the recent park to park. Thank you. Uh, with the band conditions the last couple weekends, I haven't wanted. Uh, I have wanted to quickly switch to FT8 to save the activation. The specs are a little scarce for this antenna, and don't mention data. No, they don't. DX Engineering has the most detail. Maximum power, 120 watts. SSB, CW, 50% duty cycle. Isn't that so? helpful <laughs> have you successfully used the atos for ft8 and what has been your experience so uh yes i have used the atos many times for ft8 like these activations here at sam houston national park there's 44 contacts 33 39 32 uh yes 100 it works on digital now, I was curious as to how much power I was using. Generally, when I'm running FT8, even here at home, uh, at home I run 69% power, because 69. Um, if I'm portable, I use 50 watts. Um, but I just went out to my car to see what the 891's setting was at, and lo and behold, it was actually only at 25 watts. Uh, the HF power here would be the one that controls the digital. And I made all of those contacts at Sam Houston National Forest with 25 watts. Like, it doesn't take much power at all to make contacts on FT8. Can you use as much power as you need? Absolutely. No problem with that. It is a weak signal mode, not a low power mode. Uh, so I'm, I would imagine I've used it at 50 watts. But this question had me thinking, and, and I was like, is this a let me read the manual for you? But it's really not. The power ratings for the ATOS 120A, even though the 120A, the 120 of the 120A is in fact the power rating, what kind of power rate? Is it sideband? Is it CW? Is it digital? We don't know. So I dove into this. So let's, let's research this a little bit together. So first off, here is the manual for the ATOS. And 99% of it is <laughs> how to stick the wire in the hole, okay? All of this are cautions, so not really help. And then way down here, it says max input power, 120 watts, A3J, whatever A3J means. That's it. So then I noticed down here under operations, see the operations section of the transceiver's operating manual for details of the ATOS 120A tuning and operation, thinking that maybe your transceiver's manual has something. So here is the manual for the Yesu 891, and I just searched ATOS, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pages pertaining to ATOS, or that has the word ATOS in it, and not one of these mentions power rating. It's just how to get it to work. 
So then I'm like, okay, well, what if we do the same thing with the advanced manual? Nope, nothing about power whatsoever. And then finally I Googled like ATOS power something or other. I forget what I searched, but I found this. This is the ATOS technical supplement. And this says max input power, 120 watts, single sideband. So that's all we get out of all of those manuals. One thing actually mentions what mode they're talking about when they're talking about power. So I would say one, Yesu, could you maybe update the manual for us lay people that might want to actually know the specs of the antenna and stop being so vague, please? But two, I would just go with the common antenna ratings that we use as amateurs. So for example, if you have an antenna that's rated for a 100 watts sideband, generally manufacturers will derate that to about half or 50 watts on uh, digital. So that's what I do. I don't think I've pushed more than 50 watts into the ATOS and per my power settings on my 891, I'm only using 21, not having any problems whatsoever making contacts with it at 25 watts. So that's my official answer. So let's say half of 120 is 60 watts, probably the most you'd wanna put into that ATOS, but we, we don't know. Here we go. Mr. Hand, will I pass this class? Gee, Mr. Spicoli, I don't know. <laughs> Yesu, can we run 120 watts digital? <laughs> Gee, Mike, I don't know. <laughs> so, <laughs> Yesu, could you read the manual for us and extrapolate a little? <laughs> that's, but yeah, I, it, it works fantastic for digital. That's, that's the key takeaway. Do it for digital, make the contacts, and don't melt it. So, yes. So that's my answer, and thank you for writing in. And guys, if you have amateur radio-related questions for me, shoot me an email, k8mrd at icloud.com. I would love to hear from you. In the meantime, I will bid you a fair adieu, and we'll see you next time on Ham Radio Tube 73.